So, got a sink cut. Whew. Not much spinning going on here, man. I'm catching grief for not spinning, but this black cloth doesn't spin. I am looking for a new black, a back mat, uh, more of a gray tone versus this black. This thing shows so much lint, and especially, man, when you try to zoom in and get tight on stuff. But anyways, who enough of that? Uh, what we have here is a Fanterra. Natural Course G10 9CR18 MOV Stonewash Blade. Hey, let's uh man, let's get in this thing and check it, check it in. Check it out. This is my new bench knife. This is a little Civivi banter. Yeah, and it's got a little whistling edge on it as well. Yep, I took it out, I sharpened it up, I put it on a bench. We're gonna use it. For packages for a while. A little Civivi banter. Man, the action on these things are so good. I mean, it's a small knife. It really is small. But you can you can get a, a solid three-finger grip back here. And then this choke-up spot's really good. I mean, I don't know. You're shucking oysters with this thing. Or, you know, the level of control. You can also do a pinch grip. Yeah. Pretty, pretty cool. Pocket clip runs great on these. I like them. A little Civivi banter. But right now, it's a bench knife. With a screaming edge on it. Let's see. Let's look at that screaming edge, man. We're talking about it. Let's see it. Push it right through that thin little magazine paper. Yeah. Whew. Shop. All right. Anyways, enough of, enough of the bench knife. But I like that one. Oh, let's get it back out. We need the assist. I don't like tearing these boxes up because all these knives end up someplace else at this point. Just about all of them. Not all of them, but just about. All right. Got a nice sand cut pouch. Oh, man, I, I knew something was up because this is, it was heavy. The cleaning cloth, some warranty cards, sink cut stickers. Oh, look, a little Bronte sticker. That's pretty cool. Yeah, nice. We'll get this plastic joint in it. I think I'm going to like this one because there's another one that I did a while back uh, at late 2023 scent cut similar g10 and blade big knife i i can't think of the name of it but it's one of my contenders for budget knife of the year last year man i mean it's so nice the jimping right here look at it it goes all the way down here and then up and over and man is it sharp just touching it, I can feel it. Let's get that blade out of there. I want to see it. Oh, man. Look at this thing. Wow. Oh, goodness. Look at this thing. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. -mm 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 -mm. I mean, I bought this one in 2023, <laughs> but the video is not going to drop till, you know, late February, <laughs> uh, maybe even the first of March. It, but golly, this thing is, I mean, it's a little, it's a little big. So I don't know if it would have made it for, you know, a contender of the year for last year, but golly, is it nice. It's got that same texture on that G10. I wonder if we can highlight that texture. Yeah. I mean, it's... Yeah, it's pretty, pretty grippy. Let's, uh... Let's bring in its cousin. This is the other one I was talking about. This is a Glide Strike. 
and I've had it on the channel. Look at the blade on that thing. That's that same 9CR. And look at the action on this one. Whew. I mean, it's a guillotine. Be careful, because... Yeah, if you're not careful with this one, it'll, it'll catch your fingers. The action is just superb on this. A++++. plus plus. I don't even think you got to go vertical with this knife. You could still be semi-horizontal, and that blade will come down. Perfectly centered. It's got that same rough textured G10. This is a contender for a budget knife of the year for me last year. I mean, I just, I'm, I'm enamored with this knife right here. It's a good one. It's not too big. This one's getting a little bit big. Perfect lockup. Man, this thing's stunning. Really, really, really like this knife. And thin. It's a it's an easy carry. But anyways, enough of that glide strike. Let's get back to this Fantera. Action's a little different on this one, but here again, we haven't gotten in it and cleaned it up or tuned it or, you know, none of our done a none of our bench magic to it. Really like this jimping back here though. Oof. Come on, man. That is so good. Well, let's get in this thing. And if this one's anything like the other one, the pivot's not captured. It is not captured. And it's spinning like crazy. So, let's, uh, let's get some help. Try going this way. Might need to get it off the bench. Ooh, I don't think it's going to let me in. Yep, I'm holding that side with with everything I got, and uh, it is not cooperating. I'm going to try the old press down on the blade trick. We'll see. But it's not, it doesn't appear to me that I'm going to get in here. Mm, I don't think so. I mean, all right, hold on. Okay, well, I'm tired of getting locked out of knives because manufacturers are are uh, have discovered a uh, thread locker, and so they're just locking us out now. I mean, I've had four or five in the last couple of months that... The thread locker is just so gooped in there that you can't you can't get them loose, and so we're not playing that game no more. We're gonna get in here. So we're heating up. I can feel the heat starting to rise here. So um, I guess I could just let me think about where I want to get in. I want to get in this side. Hopefully it's correct. So I'm just gonna hold down on that pivot screw. And get it get it warmed up. The, I can feel the heat big time coming through there right now. Yeah, there's a lot of heat rising out of there. This is old soldering iron, man. I've probably had this thing 20 years. Still works, you know. I got one of them big fancy ones with the trigger and all that. But, I mean, this little standby right here does just fine. Surprised it still works. Survived, you know. 
you know, this is one of those things, too, that when you think you've done it enough, just keep going a little bit. You know, patience. Patience helps big time here with this. I'm pretty sure that's so hot I can't touch it right now. I don't want to melt the G10, so I don't want to get too crazy. I don't know what its melt point is, but I don't think it's too high. The trick I'm going to have is I don't have a holder for this soldering iron, so I'm going to have to figure out where to where to put it. I've got a shelf over here I think I can stick it on. All right, let's try it. I smell, I smell something, so let's do that right there. See if I can't break this loose now. Survey says nope. Mm -mm -mm. All right, I'll be right back. Okay. So, I mean, just a lot of big patience and just tiny little eh, eh, grunty little turns, and I got it loose. And I mean, what the ever loving, come on, man. How much Loctite they got on there. You know, and it's a problem. I don't think it's the fact that it's got too much, although it does have a lot. It's just not the right type. So, I mean, hey, y'all, calm down. This stuff you're using, it ain't, it ain't right. You got to stop. Because we're running into it. So, two bits. It rolled the tips on two of those Weeha bits. Two of them. In the trash. So, I mean, there's a good testimony to... Or testament, I guess, to having multiple bits. Because if I wouldn't have had bits to change this thing of bits that I bought... If I wouldn't have had this, I would have never gotten that knife. Because changing those bits, it started to pop. And then I was able to change those bits to fret these fresh bits. And then I was able to get in it. If I couldn't have changed those bits, there's no way I'm getting in this knife. Whew. Come on, man. I mean, kind of got my dander up. But, I got you. Got you, buddy. And I didn't, I didn't strip those threads out. Ruined a couple of bits, but, shoot, man. I tell you what. I tell you what. All right, what do we got here? Skeletonized uh, liners. Look at them, a bunch. Keep that weight down. We're going to rub these down a bunch, make them look really nice when we're done. Those seem pretty locked in there. I don't really see anything here that's going to make me take that apart, so I think we're good. I can get rid of my nut buster here. Woof! Golly! Come on, man. And, I mean, it's not lubed very good. So, maybe we can improve that action. Man, look at the tuna fish size of this blade. It's, I mean, it's like boating a tuna. Look at this thing. Yeah, we're going to make all this shiny. Yeah, nice. Yeah, that's going to look good in there. It's going to look very good. Very, very, very good.
Yeah, bear with me a second. I gotta get rid of this solder iron. All right, let's keep it moving. Keep wiping, man. Yeah, it dawned on me that solder and iron was just hot and heated and had it sticking out of a shelf over here. Ooh, it's filthy on the inside of here. Bearings. Kind of hopeful that the action will be similar to the other one. There we go. Okay, let's put it back together. Goodness. Almost forgot about the struggle getting it out of there. Almost. Not completely. Oh, that feels good. Um, I am going to take a wire brush that thread. We've got this one here. There we go. Yeah, I think I got most of that cleaned out of there. Probably gonna take two screwdrivers to get that home. This knife should come apart pretty easy if I've got to do any further adjustments or ever got to get back in here to clean it up or anything. It's just, I think once I got past that Loctite, we should be pretty good to go. This uh, pocket clip is not recessed. It's got two screws, but it's just up on top of the scale. So I definitely want to keep those tight because if they get loose, that thing can wall her around in there for sure. All right. I 
think I'm going to use two screwdrivers. We're pretty loose. I'm not going to put pressure on the blade. I'm just going to try to get it with a screwdriver on both sides. You know what? I'm going to close that blade and come at it like this. Oh, just a, just a tiniest little tick more, I think. We centered. Yeah, see another tick will get it right where we want it. Just a tiniest little bit more. Yeah, buddy. Oh. Oh, look at this action. It is going to mirror that other one. That's crazy. Just needed a little tiny bit of tuning. Let me, uh, we got a bunch of, I don't know, is that dandruff or debris or what is that, man? It's black, I'll tell you what. All right. Let's give the outside a little bit of wipe. Look at this blade. I mean, if this thing isn't just phenomenally sharp, I'm going to be disappointed with how tall that blade is. This thing should be sharp. All right. Let's look at this thing now. It's cleaned up. Look at all that skeletonizing in there. Those shiny scales on the inside offset by that natural jade. That's really good looking. I like it. I like it a lot. Pocket clip. It's got that same beautiful shine to it. Even the pivot. Stone wash on the blade. Yeah. Drop shut. So, so good. Wonderful. Let's look at the lockup. Eh, it's about 50%. We'll check it. Give it a whack. Yeah. It's in good shape, man. Wow, that action's good. Good. Look at that. Yeah, so it's got A level action. Uh, approaching A plus. For sure. Oh, that's good. Ergonomics. So, right out of the gate, uh, with the cutout, the flipper tab is a finger guard with that jimping on it. The way that this tapers here, the other three fingers fall in line there. This is uh, not very confident, confident, very confident. This is definitely over the confident scale. And it's approaching the very confident side of things. This is a really confident grip. Very comfortable. Nice little perch for the thumb to come backwards. And it's not, not so much this reverse grip. The uh, pocket clip's pretty much invisible in there. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really feel that in there. Speaking of the pocket clip, let's run it. We already know though, right? I mean, just looking at it, we already know what this is gonna do. It's gonna run like a dream in every spot. Whoop. Yeah, nice profile. It's got all these holes cut in it, so it's easy to get out of there. Even on the thin stuff, it's got a good grip. It's not a drier grip, and that is a big knife. It's got a lot of weight to it, but I mean, it's it's, it's holding on well. Yeah, pocket clip's a complete pass. I mean, it's a good one. No doubt about it. Easy, one-handed, in and out of pocket. Let's check for safety. 
Whew, I was a little concerned, man. That blade was like right there, but yeah, I can't get it. The tip's buried in there. There's no way to get that. So the tip's good. The clip is good. And I'm confident of putting this in my pocket and not making blade contact. So yeah. All right. Let's check that big mountain of a blade. Look at the look at the girth of this flat grind. I mean, how thin is that on the edge? Yeah. Wow. I mean, razor blade stuff right here. Out of the box. Not stropped. This is straight out of the box from Sencut. With, I mean, the type of sharpness that you could strop this, but why? I mean, yeah, this thing. And this isn't that phone book paper. This is that even thinner magazine paper. I mean, it's easy to get hung up in that stuff. And this thing, I mean, it was carving through it, doing corners and angles. Wow. Yeah, this thing's crazy sharp. Like it should be, though, when you look at this blade shape. Uh, price and availability. So I'm going to put a link to Amazon. These are hovering just above $40 for next day delivery from Amazon. So I, here's what I'd tell you. If a big knife with great action and a stunning sharp blade. I mean, hair cutting, probably hair whittling. This thing is that sharp. Stonewash blade. There's there's blacked out versions. There's this. There's uh, there's a couple of different ver. You know what? I'm just gonna look. Okay. There's a black G10 like this that also has the stonewash blade. There's a OD green G10 that has a blacked out blade, and then there's a wood handle that's got a lot of sculpting to it that's got a blacked out stonewash blade as well. So there's three different models. I think the wood one is just over $45. I mean, golly, I'll put a link to Amazon down below, but I, man, I really liked, I really liked the knife and I don't think you'd be disappointed for the money, you know, just over $40, this amazing action, the sliciness. And the ergonomics of this thing. So comfortable in hand. I mean, and what couldn't this thing do? I mean, wow. Anyways, there it is. The Sencut Fantara. Fantara? Probably Fantara. G10, stonewashed, 9CR18MOV. Appreciate you watching. Check it out.